All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian Farmer. It's Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end-of-day recap for Tuesday, uh, January 9th. And yes, the Bitcoin ETF, I guess, is, is not being approved. <laughs> or I should say, no, it is not being approved. I'm laughing because it's kind of enough is enough with this uh, with the drama over the Bitcoin ETFs. It's so funny. I you know If you think people don't like attention, um, <laughs> I really think that they do because it's kind of at this point, and I don't want to make this this whole video about this, but the, the news just came out, so I'll talk about it. But the, I mean, there's already a Bitcoin ETF that tracks futures. Um, you know, they sh obviously that's more risky to me than it is uh, having a spot ETF. But hey, I guess it is what it is. They had to get their ducks in a row of how to proceed with it. But so, uh, you know, it sounds like this, uh, the announcement, uh, the FCC website was hacked. So um, interesting. But regardless of all the drama, I, that the drama is going to continue with this. I really think uh, if you're looking for a trade for this, what I would be doing uh, particularly is going long uh, Bitcoin and going short short coinbase um i think that's, that's a very simplistic trade um and the reason why i think that trade works is because um you're just not going to need to transact bitcoin now of course there's um there's a whole bunch of other crypto coins and so forth so coinbase will still do okay but if you're going to be if people are going to be transacting uh bitcoin etf uh, versus, um, you know, buying Bitcoin directly. Um, and I think some people will be doing that. I don't think all the people will be doing that, but it should take away slightly from their business. And, um, you know, I think plus a lot of these names have run up. So I think that's a really good trade. Now, again, you don't have to go short out outright. You can go long Bitcoin and you can go short coin. Um, and, I, and I think that trade will work for a couple other names too, because the other reason for that too is for some funds that have, you know, have wanted to get some exposure to Bitcoin, right? They've been doing it through what's called like proxies, right? The next best thing. And people used to do, if you don't believe me, people used to do this back in the day. And I'm, I'm giving myself some age here with this reference, but the same thing with the gold ETF, when that first came out, people were buying before they bought gold, um, you know, GLD, uh, they were buying gold miners, uh, you know, because that was the next best thing, because it was harder to buy gold you know you could you could do it but it was harder to get it done you could like kitco i think was a place that people were buying um you know gold directly but um but the bottom line the e people are always looking for the easiest thing right and at that point there was a lot of people who were buying uh gold miners um to get some exposure right and then um you know and then of course people would just buy gold so it's kind of the same thing you know why would you want to buy mara which is a bitcoin miner um when you could just buy bitcoin itself but but some people didn't like that when I said that on Twitter yes, uh, yesterday. That's my trade. You don't have to trade it. Um, you could disagree with it. And that's what makes a market, of course. Speaking of the market, let's let's get to that. So, um, you know, kind of an interesting day. Um, I didn't have this in here, but breath was lagging. So if you look at today's uh, performance, you know, what kind of masks things sometimes, and you may have been perfectly okay with today's price action. Like you, you may be fine with the price action for the day because you may have been trafficking more in some of the things that went up today because there were some things, you know, the queues had a nice rally from the open was up, as you could see right here on my, um, in my spreadsheet, queues were up about 1% from the open. So you might've loved today's price action. However, there was very thin participation as you could see that if I open this up a little bit further, there's a lot more red areas than green. Now, look at the areas that went down today, right? A lot of energy stocks, again, they've been lagging. Um, steel stocks were down a lot. Uh, the SLX ETF uh, was down uh, 3% on the trading session. Uh, you know, a bunch of other areas, metals and mining, which kind of covers some of that. The banks were down 1% today. Um, the Chinese internet names were down another 1.5%. Now, they rallied a little bit from the open. But again, a lot more things um, in the red, uh, you know, and that were, that got hit harder than the things that went up today. So we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the things, you know, where there's some bright spots in energy. And um, if you're looking in that area and, you know, what happened with some of the groups that outperformed 
um, pretty well. You know, the semis finished up on the day. They rallied 1.1% from the open. Didn't close on the highs, but still pretty good. Um, same thing, like biotech has been absolutely on fire. So um, let's talk first with the indices um, and how um, the market webs can really kind of give you a sense of where uh, where you can basically do your trading, right? Depending if you're staying long or if you're kind of shifting or if you're buying the dip. So what we're looking at is S&P futures and, and it's a one hour chart. We could look at SPY too. It's going to be very similar levels, but we started the week inside the value area. We broke above. You have you had a retest and you had a bounce on the, on the retest. Same thing. So that level is 471.31 in case you're don't have the market webs and you want to um, know some of these levels, but same thing with the queues, right? It's quite normal to have a, a strong, uh, you know, cause yesterday was extremely strong and the breath was good yesterday too, but he, you know, here's your move, right? Here's your check back. Right. And, um, you know, we held 40130 and we bounced, right. And, and queues were higher than they were um, yesterday. So that's, that's, pretty decent price action right for the, for the queues but overall you know and then then you look at IWM which is down today right this not not so great um notice the difference uh IWM is not above its value area for the week and um and is uh yeah so it's inside value and it also is underperforming so not every area so all I'm trying to say here is that not every area of the market is strong and which is potentially not great um, is if you um, if you look at uh, I guess I don't have it here and if you look at the NICE summation index right we're starting to see this crossover and I think this will be this has not been updated for today but you'll see a bigger crossover so just and and again just you know what does that mean or what does that translate to it means more stocks are going down than going up now like I said you may have been in some of the good names today right and you probably if that was the case then you weren't complaining too much so of course let's go to the most uh, talked about name right now uh, which is Nvidia um, here's my thought on Nvidia really quickly I'm still long I, <clears throat> I don't love the way it closed so I took another uh, price target right um, you know that's just trade management I took a target at the end of the day at uh 533 stock close at 531 i still have it on but again i'm not going to give back um you know uh nice gains on this right i want to stay long as long as it's working well notice what it did today and i was very um adamant about this earlier today but i said if you wanted to get in this name right you're gonna have to like you know think of a, you're gonna have to what happens a lot of times is traders always look towards the left um they tend to look at, you know, if a stock is down a lot from the highs, right? Oh, geez, well, this stock's trading at 25 bucks. And, and you know, a couple of years ago, it was trading at 200. It must be a good buy, right? That's the worst possible thinking, in my opinion, that you can have. And it's kind of the same thing when a stock goes up, too. They're like, oh, geez, I missed it. The stock went up 5%. You know, I should have bought it yesterday, right? But you got to think about what's going forward, right? Obviously, a company that was up, you know, much higher than it was previously, there were reasons for why, why it was up there. And there's reasons for why it's down here now. Perhaps their business changed, right? PayPal is always the example that, that I try to give. When, pay, when PayPal was going up to new highs, right, it was the only game in town. You know, uh, it didn't, there wasn't a lot of other places where you can transfer money. Now they have more competition, right? Um, there's... What's the one from JP Morgan Chase? Zelle, right? You could do, the, you know, so they kind of had a little bit of a, a moat for a little while, a monopoly in that payment, you know, peer to peer payment space. Now you could do that in a bunch of other places. So that's why PayPal is not going back to the highs unless they come up with a better mousetrap, right? So, but people don't think like that, right? People think, oh, look at where, where it was. So same thing. So the, what I'm trying to do is just contrast where I, people get stuck, right? They're like, oh, I can't buy this now. So it depends what you think NVIDIA is doing um, going forward. So we'll see and may give another chance tomorrow. And I'm happy to kind of add to my position um, if we do dip into um, support. But this was perfect, right? Because ultimately what we want to see you know, when a name kind of goes straight up is a little bit of digestion, you know, a little bit of back and forth, right? And even this was just down a little bit, 
and here was your level, right, to go long, right? And again, you can't look at what it did to the left, right? You got to think about where it's going. So this provided a nice little entry. Um, some folks in the trading room who didn't get long yesterday um, took advantage of that. So where is the stock, you know, so even though it didn't close on the highs, I think the breakout is still in effect. If it has an inside day or, or kind of lets the five-day moving average catch up a little bit um, and it goes down a little bit, I don't think that that's a major problem. Again, that's why you manage the trade. You take a little bit off and you can kind of uh, relax with a smaller position, right? This is just trading 101. By the way, look at the volume, by the way, on the breakout too, right? So ultimately, I think that we're, you know, we're out of the range. Um, we do have to close above, you know, where I would be wrong is on this weekly uh, chart. If this doesn't close above five, 503.80, right? By Because again, don't forget, we have the CPI report. We've got bond auctions uh, later this week. And um, so things, things could change, right? You always have to stay on your toes and have a contingency plan. So if NVIDIA doesn't close above 503.80, then you know we're back in the range. Um, and again, that's for the week. We're looking at a weekly bar. All right, other names that I thought that I was impressed with today, right? Because of, of course, there was a lot of um, really good price action in some names outside of that and in some different groups. SMCI followed through today. Um, that was a nice move and that's going to be uh, testing those highs. It's amazing how SMCI and NVIDIA tend to kind of go together. Um, Broadcom, which I mentioned yesterday, I don't think it closed on the highs, but you know, same thing, right? Had a huge move. You know, kind of came in a little bit, fell apart a little bit, but right into the 20 day moving average and back above a lot of a lot of strong names are doing that. Um, one that saw a lot of option activity today was arm. I'm still long this name. I actually put back um, or I added back a target that I took yesterday in it and I'll and I'll stay long this name as long as it stays above 70 bucks. Right, I'll give it a little bit more bumper room than, than the uh, top of value. Um, and then another um, name in the semi group and then I'll move on to another group is CAMT. Um, remember, I think I talked about this in yesterday's video, but CAMT was was strong when a lot of the other semi names were not. Um, for now, I, I took a target at 72 bucks. I think it's 72 two was it uh 72 so I, I didn't i didn't get the highs in this one that's my third target in this swing trade and um and i will uh, sit with the balance right and keep in mind you know taking a target or two right just like i was talking about with arm if the stock goes down one or two percent right you can by chance add it back provided that it's staying you know above its breakout level right and above its uh support next level of course to talk about um and i should really be talking about this group first but that's okay um biotech continues to be red hot um even though the etf didn't close up uh you know by a huge amount um the dip was bought again today right look at the um what it did from the open up 1.2 percent again it shows that there's still that there's a lot of buying going on there um the medical device group was leaning at one point in the day um it did not close on the highs um but was up more than a quarter of a percent and isrg reported good numbers i think that's one of the biggest weights in the ihi etf and look at this thing it's up to 249 so I, I think i did the right thing by staying long um ihi let's see um, here's the holding page it's the second biggest holder so it's about 11 percent of the um, ihi etf here's what that looks like if you just want a view of, of um of IHI, this name's not going to trade here in the uh, in the after hour. The ETF's not going to trade in the after hours. But um, I like that. You know, again, it's already made a big move from the lows. But you got to look at where you think it's going. You know, next, not you know, because this was a great buy at, with at this lower VPOC. Right? <laughs> this uh, volume at price crushed it um, on the lows. Look at that. Right. And that's why we use um, the market webs. Uh, just a beautiful reversal. Look at this one down here too. Right. Notice when it was down here, it didn't take it left. It left it to come back to it. Right. And that was a perfect takeout and reversal um, off of that. So I'm playing for the from VPOC to VPOC. Right. I'm looking for this next one. Fifty six seventy five is uh, is where I think um, the IHI ETF is going. Um, I also like, you know, a couple of the smaller cap names. This is TMDX, which I believe belongs to that group. But really nice. This thing has really not participated the last couple of weeks. But look at it get going now. Now, now that medical devices are starting to go a little bit. So um, I like this name if you're looking for something, um, you know, a little bit higher risk, 
uh, because this name moves fast, right? Speaking of some of the other names, you know, there's a lot of biotech names that are on the four week new high list. Um, there's been a lot of good strength, but a lot of these things are kind of running into resistance, right? And that's where, again, you know, having, you know, understanding where there's overhead supply in some of these, um, in some of these names, you know, really helps, right? So, so here's one, um, VKTX, um, 2168, right? It's probably going to have some difficulty there. You know, even though this looks like a really powerful break, you're just getting right into that overhead supply. This is why I always um, like to see names um, that are more in defined uptrends because you're not dealing with any of that overhead supply. Um, there was another name too, uh, but I'm forgetting what it was in the biotech. Uh, Sarepta too was one that had a monster day too on the back of that um, JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. They had some nice uh, analysts said some nice things about what they reported, but right into that virgin point of control. Now, remember, it doesn't have to stop here. But it becomes a battle of new buyers and um, and old sellers, right? These sellers got trapped when the stock went down. On um, you know, there was a drug announcement that the FDA did not approve. So you've got a lot of what's called dead bodies over here, right? A lot of people who have been wait who have been trapped and waiting to sell when the price gets back up there. Hence the term overhead supply. Um, I also had. What was the, I just can't remember the other name. The other, there's another biotech name that slams right into um, an overhead supply, but um, I don't have it up in front of me. Let's talk about the next group, CrowdStrike, right? Really nice move. All, you know, I was targeting that virgin point of control when we were here. Um, it didn't do it. It kind of fell down. Um, I did this. So I did one. I did two trades uh, last week that I could talk about in, in the cyberspace. One worked really well. One did not. And again, I talk about losers and I talk about winners, too. too. I know some people just like to talk about winners. I get it. Right? But that's not reality. Everybody has losers, too. Um, so CrowdStrike, this was I'll do the good and then I'll do the bad. Um, CrowdStrike, I did add to my position, right? Um, you know, once we hit support, it's been one of my favorite names. That's why you, you, it helps to kind of, you know, organize in your trading plan what you, where your high conviction names are versus your names that you're more of just um, a tourist in, right? Not to say I was a tourist in Palo Alto last week. It just wasn't working. Right. And that's and it hit a stop price. So I got rid of it. Right. It broke below its January value area um, and it just wasn't doing anything. And I was afraid that this was going to go down to this 200 day moving average. This pattern also, I, I didn't like the look of that. But sure enough, you know, these things come back and, um, you know, perhaps I needed maybe a little bit more patience or I should have just got back into it yesterday. You know, yesterday would have I think that would have been the right decision is to get back into it yesterday or this morning on the break of the valuary, because still um, the majority of the move happened, um, you know, today. Right. So you you could have uh, definitely done that. But that's a real nice. I like this. Right. And I am long Palo Alto in another portfolio. That's the TTG trend portfolio. Um just to go a little further into some of these names, um, Zscaler, right? Da, 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 da. Um, did, this did take out this VPOC up here, but you know, so it got back to those highs. Um, it left this for the, <laughs> it was so close last week. So I would watch what this does at 226. And I'm seeing a lot of names in the tech software space that rallied right up to that top of value. So what does that mean? Well, you've got a little bit of short-term resistance. Not to say that Zscaler is going to stop right there, but you've got a nice level to trade against. You could trade against 226, you know, or wait until it gets above there. Um, also another name too, that is lesser, less popular, but sometimes I like the less popular names, right? This made a nice move inside its, you know, made a nice move. This was a really big star. And again, I, it just didn't get that much attention. Tension, but it was really nice. Um, 45, 49 is a level to watch. I know um, for a while people really got, fell in love with this name, VRT. Um, watch 49.58, right? Um, that's something to pay attention to, um, that top of value, right? Shopify made a really uh, nice move too, but that's got to get through overhead supply. Uh, not over, Sorry, not overhead supply, but the top of January value area. The red, the red is the um, overhead supply virgin point of control. But I think this is a good chance. Remember, I think this was Friday of last week that they bought a lot of um, September calls in this one. Um, I mentioned, so you've got, so th that's where your strength was again, um, you know, tech, 
Um, I didn't even go through really, you know, outside of that, but but Meta looks decent if it could stay above 356. Um, here's what the great eight names did. Again, I call them the great eight because I throw Netflix in there, but half of them were up today. Um, Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft. Oh, this was another name. I thought of it. Yeah. So this is from our watch list. We compile this watch list every um, weekend and then I add to it. Um, but this was RXRX, right? Take a look at this one right into that version point of control. So again, the, you know, this is, I mean, that that was a 14% move. Um, just uh, since we talked about this name, you know, earlier this, since I put this name on the watch list, but this is, a, I mean, that's a nice trade. Nine, from nine, $10 to 14, right? it's a 40% move. You know, you take it, you put it in your pocket, right? Anything else is you're being greedy, in my opinion. Now it's okay to leave a trailer, but a 40% move in a week, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes people don't, you know, they forget to do the, they, they need the perspective. So that's why I, I try to do that. Datadog um, has had a nice move this week. I didn't take every one of these trades, right? I can't take everyone, uh, you know, every trade that triggers and manage it well, um, considering everything that, you know, I'm doing managing a trading room. Um, but um, the TMDX is here. That we already talked about NVIDIA, um, AMD. Right. That also got back to those previous highs. You know, if it has an inside day and kind of checks back to 144, that might be a better place. Last thing um, I'll talk about is, you know, I mentioned what is doing well in the um, in the energy space. And it's the coal names. You know, the trend continues. Um, CEIX is hasn't been the uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of CENX, is it CENX? Um, oh, look at that. It did not close above its value area. So it kind of got rejected there. Um, 1172 is a level to watch there. But I think AMR um, is the best name. Keep in mind, I'm going to talk about this for two seconds. Just the other name. CCJ is another name that saw some call activity. Watch to see if it, see if it could stay inside its value area, which is 44. Um, just two other quick names, Dash and... Um, Dash had a big day. Uber had a decent day too. Also, right to the top of the value area. So again, if you're look, if you didn't get in into these names, now you you want to look where's your where's your resistance, where's your support that you could trade against, and think about to the to the right, right? And that's one hundred two sixty five. Um, last one, Uber. Um, watch to see if Uber can get above 60, uh, 92, had a good day, not as good as, uh, as dash. All right, guys, that is it for, for today's video. Um, uh, you know, just end of uh, video message is that, um, just, you know, kind of be, uh, cognizant that breath is not good. What do I do when breath is not good? Um, I have a short leash on trades. For instance, I got into Celsius today, right? I got right out of it <laughs> um, because I don't, you know, if we're starting to, if we're continuing to see this bad breath, you're going to see, you will see, you'll continue to see um, breakouts fail if the breath is not good because it's just not conviction. So, you know, all of those names that I went through, they're going to have a test. We're going to see, we're going to need more buying that comes in. Will that happen after the CPI report on Thursday? It could be, right? We don't know what we're going to get. They're looking for month over month 0.2 um, for CPI, but we'll we'll see because I think that's going to be a, a potential catalyst um, for the week. But yes, when I see breath declining, I, I have a very short leash on trades and I don't want to keep adding to exposure. I actually want to be reducing my exposure um, when the breath is poor. So those are some of the adjustments that we make uh, when we start to see more names going down versus up, which is basically what we've been seeing in January, even though we, we had a, a hell of a day yesterday. All right, guys, that's it for today's recap. Um, two places that you can go to um, if you want to know more about Tribeca Trade Group, you go right to our website, TribecaTradeGroup.com. Um, you could also go to my uh, Substack page. Uh, which I don't have that up for you, but um, you can find it just on my um, on my Twitter page, and you can um, you know find out what we're all about uh, by by signing up for a seven day trial on Substack. Guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.